All right, greetings and welcome back to Switch to Linux. Yes, the kitty is on vacation every time I have guests on the show so that they have one web camera and you guys have the other. So uh, that's why there's no kitty cam when we have uh, these supporter shows. I'm sure, though, we can get him to show up because he's right here. Hi, kitty. Welcome up. All right, but we are joined. That's the kitty. There you go. How you guys doing, huh? See? He didn't go far on vacation. He's just, you know, chilling here. All right, so we are joined today. We got Ben. We got uh, Brian, the uh, uh, doctor slash um, uh, college professor in computer sciences. We got Daniel. We got uh, Quint, the uh, fedora guy. Woo! -hoo. And we got this crazy psycho who stuck his head in a lawnmower this week. So, you know. So, how is everybody doing today? Wonderful. Yo, yo, I'm great. Good. All right. And I'm looking forward to this. Oh, good. Very cool. Yeah. So, today we're going to talk about DRM. And uh, the article I pulled out, if you guys didn't catch it from the, uh, from the um, uh, links there in Patreon and things, we're going to be looking at this article with... Um, the Verge, and of course, there's a few different people reported on it. And uh, um, Ben and I were talking about this before we jumped on. This is more doom and gloom than it is practical reality. Um, but basically, the Pixel Three has has wireless charging, but it will only wireless charge fast <laughs> if you have certain approved devices. So effectively, DRM on your wireless charger. Thoughts, guys? What do you guys think about this? I think it's nuts. Go ahead. <laughs> I think it's stupid. <laughs> All I right. Thought uh, the Pixel Two had some crazy stuff, like the photo chip. Like the the Pixel Two has this spe special photo chip in it that like helps yeah. optimize images, and it hasn't been even used. And, and was it the Pixel or was it the iPhone that that there was a software glitch that put a second notch on the phone on the side? I forget which phone it was. Let me, um, let me clarify. Continue. You're Sorry. saying if you have a Pixel phone, it'll only charge with authorized stuff that goes with it only. It only charges rapidly. It always charges at the slow 5-watt rate. It will okay. only charge rapidly with a Google-approved device. That's Ooh, kind of what the R That was. I don't agree with. Mm -hmm. uh, Brian, what's your thoughts on this? I think it's nuts. <laughs> it's just more of control of what you own and what you can do with what you own by the people that want to control our lives. Yeah, yeah. And Ben, you did some more research into this. What's uh, what's what's the end of the doom and gloom on this? <laughs> okay, so from my point of view, the, the 1.0 spec of the key charger is 5 watts anyway. So all of the chargers that charge faster than that are, by definition, running outside of that specification. So... It's not like the Pixel 3 won't charge with those chargers. They'll charge at 5 watts. Mm -hmm. I, would I prefer that it, it accepted all chargers? Yes, but I, I don't see this as a massive problem. Yeah, uh, and, and I don't either, especially on the basis, like something to keep in mind for us consumers as we're buying phones and devices. If you charge your battery more rapidly, it will decrease the lifespan of the battery. You can keep your devices alive better if you charge them more slowly if you have that capability. I feel like even if you're buying an $800 phone or whatever it costs, you should be able to use whatever wireless charger you want. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm you with got you. it there, bud. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Completely. Yeah. And this is more of this. And, and what the thing that caught me, of course, is I'm always into the DRM stuff. And, of course, I sell my books and things. And I sell my books DRM-free, which kind of gives you some challenges um, because if you are selling on the Kindle platform, uh, of course, create spaces where you used to do your print books. Um, I think this is actually at Lightning Source, but uh, actually here, this one is this one is from Create Space. Um, this one here, Create Space is no longer doing the printing books; they're merging them all into Kindle's uh, KDP. But KDP for digital distribution has what's called KDP Select, which means they're advertised more, they're promoted more, you make more money off of them, and all these things. If you choose to accept DRM, lock it to the Kindle devices and sell exclusively on Amazon. <laughs> and as an author, I will tell you that you make a lot more sales on Amazon. But I want people to be able to buy other places because some people think Amazon's lost their ever-loving mind and don't want to buy 
on Amazon. Yeah. So, what do you guys do? You guys use do you guys buy ebooks and things like that? Where do you buy them from? What do you use to read your ebooks and things like that? And actually, before we answer that question, I want to acknowledge we got a super chat in and uh, analog. Thank you very much for the super chat analog. All right, so back to you guys. Do you guys uh, buy ebooks? Where do you buy them from? What devices do you use to use your ebooks? I don't really buy ebooks. I just read paper books the okay. old-fashioned way, or I do it. Through my school has programs to buy ebooks okay. and get for free and stuff. Okay. Um, Daniel, ebooks, no ebooks. Um, for a while there, I was off work on medical for a while, and I got into these audio books. Mm -hmm. And I preferred. I, I had a, a niche that I liked the the audio books from music, uh, bands and stuff like that from back in the sixties and seventies because mm -hmm. they had produced Let's... some really good books. And some of the people and some of them groups actually read the books to you. Like if you buy um, Fleet, uh, Mick Fleetwood's Play On, Mick Fleetwood reads the book to you. Mm -hmm. And they bring up some interesting history about the 50s and 60s. Like uh, Mick Fleetwood was, he did he did very poorly in school. He had issues of all kinds, and they didn't have a name for it. Well, it turned out he had dy dyslexia. Mm -hmm. You know, and I ain't gonna ruin any more of the book. But you learn all these little things, and of yeah. course, I had to get the book from um, Audible, which is a leg mm -hmm. of Amazon, which is. Yep. DMR encrypted, so it only works on a phone or yeah. something. Yeah. In fact, I was going to get to I was going to get to audiobooks next, actually. So, but go ahead. But um, I have a, I have about uh, eight to a dozen of these books that I really got into, and if I milked them and listened to them for an hour each day, I could get a week or two out of them. Mm -hmm. And um, okay. they're not cheap. They're like twenty to twenty-five dollars a book. You know, so yeah. um, for a while there, I was doing that because I was trying to fight boredom because I was off from work and was looking for things to do and some entertainment. And yeah. after a while, I was like, why am I buying these books to only re work if you have a certain app that mm -hmm. runs them? Yep. And that's a concern. <laughs> um, so we'll get and we'll get more into the audiobook specifically in a few minutes here. Uh, Brian, what's your thoughts on this? Do you, do you with, use uh, ebooks? Yep, I'm with Quint a lot on this one in that I really don't do a lot of ebooks until recently. I'm a little old school, I guess. Mm -hmm. So, which is refreshing to see a young person who's old school yep. also. Yeah. Yep. But right. I'm a lot more into paper books, um, mm -hmm. hard copy. I've always loved hard copy. I could own it, I could touch it. Um, I started with ebooks partly because of your site. I was able to download Testing and Temptations. Oh. I just uploaded the uh, Art of Shallow Neighboring today, as a matter of fact. Ooh, so I look forward to reading that one. Yep. Um, through the school, because I'm faculty there, I got to get a lot of uh, ebooks through Daytona State College. So I'm into ebooks. Them, I read them on my big computer. I have an ebook mm -hmm. reader that I downloaded yeah. off the internet, and I just read them on my big screen. And it's yeah. really easy. I just yeah. click the pages with my mouse. Mm -hmm. Well, Brian, yeah, and I, I'm split right in the middle where I like the paper books and I generally will read them first, but there's a whole lot of books available freely. Like uh, project Gutenberg is a place where you can download a lot of old classic books. So those old books, I mean, I would have never read things like, um, you know, uh, Lewis Carroll's, um, you know, uh, Christmas stories and all these really famous old books. I never would have read them if I had to buy them or had the paper book, but I was able to put them on an iPad well, I was doing some exercise. It worked out great. So that we was came kind of my from thought. the age of physical media. Everything mm -hmm. in our past was on physical media: paper yeah, like books, vinyl, DVDs, right. things like that. DVDs. Um, yeah. Yes. <laughs> now there you go. This is a book I've been reading. It's the it's a book. It's Linus Torvald's biography, just yeah. for fun. It's a. And it's, you've been reading I, that just for fun, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did have to do some book stuff for school. Good. Where you had to read like a book for an hour a week. So this okay. is what I think. And I was hard to explain to my teacher what Linux was. <laughs> a young <laughs> Linux evangelist is what we need. Um, ben, what's your thought on uh, books and ebooks and stuff? I used to buy a lot of ebooks. I read them on a on an old Palm Pilot, the old uh, monochrome displays. 
I haven't bought ebooks in a long time. I, I, I really like the displays on the um, on the uh, the e paper readers though. Mm -hmm. um, I've I sort of prefer physical books, admittedly. Yeah. But uh, if I was going to get a, a, a dedicated e reader, I'd have to get one with the e paper. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So that's the um, that's kind of the the ebooks. With of course ebooks. Uh, I mean, I I like ebooks. Um, and. For me, the biggest deal is when I want to buy a book, I want to buy some because, like you guys said, we were from the era of physical media. If I buy a CD, I have a physical thing. Now, the beautiful thing about CDs is I can, no question about the law, legally digitalize it and consume it digitally so long as I'm not distributing it, you know. Um, and so... Sorry, mm -hmm. my my um, Google Hangouts went out again. <laughs> That's okay. If I was saying, it was uh, just, hard to explain to me. I had to tell my teacher what the book was, and it was hard to explain to her what Linux was. Yeah, yeah, so. for sure. Um, but uh, the thing I don't like about the Kindle, particularly the DRM locked ones, is these devices lock you into their device, and of course, Kindle pays you more. They pay you more to have this exclusivity um, and they want you to have this exclusivity because that's all they want. They want you to be exclusive to their platform. And the problem is you buy it and it's licensed. You don't own it. Versus if you get a DRM unlocked book, you can download a copy, you can upload it on any device, a computer, a tablet, or whatever else that you want to do that. And uh, that is for me a lot better thing. It's that perfect middle. It's DRM that destroys that perfect middle. Uh, but now let's get into the audiobooks because I just finished producing Art of Shallow Neighboring as an audiobook. So yeah, I'm sorry I jumped ahead on that. Oh, no, no, no problem. You didn't know it was coming. Um, <laughs> but um, so, of course, if you want to get your audiobooks out everywhere, there's two places you have to put them. You have to put them on ACX. Actually, there's places you can do it with a single place. But just like the paperback books, if I want to publish paperback books, I want to put them on KDP Select and I want to put them on Ingram Spark uh, because that puts them everywhere, distributed everywhere. Um, and Ingram Spark can put them on Amazon, but they're going to take a much larger commission versus if I list them on Amazon, that covers Amazon, CreateSpace, and the other Amazon properties. And then I use Ingram Spark for everything else. Well, the same thing happens for audiobooks. So there's a company called ACX. And ACX distributes audiobooks to Audible, Amazon, and iTunes. And so when you put your book up through here, you have the choice between exclusive distribution and non-exclusive distribution. So exclusive distribution, you get a 40% royalty, but you can only sell it on iPhone, uh, the, the iTunes store, Amazon, and Audible. So the iPhone and the Amazon companies. And then I went through and there's a few other distributors. I chose to use the one called uh, Find Away Voices because it has the best payment profile to put it literally everywhere else. So you'll be able to find those. Now, I don't set the price on this, but I chose to go with the non-exclusive. I will only earn 25% for putting my audiobook up here. Um, I'm only going to earn 25%. But I don't set, set the price. I don't know what the price is going to be. I'll tell you if you get it through the other partners. I've started it at $12. I might bump up the price a little bit more. I don't know. Um, you guys, patron supporters, um, you guys can have a copy of that. Just let me know. Uh, and uh, since it's a, such a big file, I'll have to get you a separate link for it. The but pricing on audiobooks is usually how many hours the book Correct. is and mm -hmm. how popular it sells sets its mm -hmm. price. Yeah, yeah. So I went with, uh, this is about a three hour some read time. And so I went with the range for a three hour read time on uh, Find Away Voices. They, they give you some pricing guidelines ranges between 10 and like 10 and $20. So I went with 12. I think I went 12. I might have done 14, but I think I did 12. So I'll put it out there as that approximate price. And of course, if you buy it directly from my site, when I figure out how to put a file that large on my site, or when you buy it from, I'll put it on Payhip eventually, I get the most royalties on those. I'm going to get the second most if you get it through, probably through Audible, and I'll get the third most buying it through any other distribution. But they're still DRM locked, as you said, Daniel. Um, DRM yeah, locked. Yeah, grinds you, me. You can't download it. You can't use it on anything that's not the Audible app. It's like, uh, 
Now, there's applications you can get to break it. Some people would say they're legal. Some people would say they're not. Some people would say it depends on your jurisdiction. Well, you want to go a little bit farther. Another thing grinds me is DVDs are DM unlocked too, and four different yep. flavors. So they're yep. like redundantly DMR locked. Mm -hmm. Meaning you need a pile of software just to get the movies out of them if you want to make a copy for yourself digitally. Yeah, yeah. And which, of course, if you're on Linux, you know, sudo apt install um, handbrake. But, handbrake you know. does not always work. Um, um, it, it actually depends upon your system, I found. If you like a system that always seems to work, you got to go with Linux Mint. <laughs> I found this out because... Um, I was trying to get some things off of DVDs, and for a while, my backup computer was Ubuntu Mate, and the thing would always fail. And I thought it was just because I bought the crappy CD-ROM. So I'd always have to do them in my other computer. Well, the other computer was running Linux Mint. So I'm like, what happens if I boot this thing into Linux Mint? Boot it into Linux Mint, works perfectly every time. What, would it work on Fedora, you think? Um, right. Try it, but I am not sure because Fedora does not do well with media as it anyway, and it has to do with the media codex. I will yeah, say I don't it does really, work in Manjaro. Yeah, I don't even think we have no, we're, we're or you're or breaking anything. up a little bit, Clint. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I don't think we have any CDs in our house or anything. We all flash drive stuff. This computer that I'm on has a DVD drive, but this is like the only computer we have that has a DVD drive in it. Mm -hmm. so if somebody um, has to use a DVD for some reason, they have to use my computer, and they have to figure out how to work <laughs> Linux. <laughs> Revenge! <laughs> The DMR, they even started that with VHS tapes. Do you remember a thing called Microvision? Mm -hmm. If you plugged a tape in from one VCR to another one, it would not copy without the screen going light and dark and light and I, dark. I, I just and... I just realized our uh, pizza just told me our title still says Ubuntu 1810. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does. It's funny. Oh, well, hey, guys, that was yesterday or two days ago. I don't know, whatever it was. We'll get it fixed. All right, somebody talk about audiobooks while we get our title fixed. <laughs> yeah, I, not audiobooks, but I remember um, Daniel just was talking about the uh, Macrovision. I remember when Macrovision first came out in 1985, the first yep. movie that they used it on was Back to the Future. And nobody knew, everyone that tried to copy Back to the Future, no one understood why it wouldn't work. It just wouldn't work. And then they found out later it was because they were introducing a new, brand new at the time, new anti-copying technology called Macrovision. Yep. Some and DVDs then, had that as well that wouldn't let you copy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the okay. technology's a little different, but it does the same thing. DVDs have that and about four other different things they got on them, too. And they may change them about every six months. They'll change the whole thing, and then you got to change your software to actually rip them. Yeah, I remember, um, I remember that um, uh, being a case, um, just needing to looking at some of the different versions of the tools where you need to go in there and change your codex, things like that. Um, so, uh, Ben, experience with audiobooks, yes, no? Um, the few I've had experience with, uh, it was good. It was, you could put it on in the background and get other things mm -hmm. done or. Yeah. And, and I remember. Yeah, the, the two I remember were, um, uh, Connections by James Burke and, um, the Cambridge Lectures with, uh, Stephen Hawking. Those are the two mm -hmm. that stand out in my mind. Okay. Yeah. And my first experience with them, of course, is buying them on CD, you know, books on tape, books on CD. Of course, with those, you just pop them in there and pull them off and put them oh, on the sure. MP3 player. Um, I had all those. Uh, matter of fact, I had one of those uh, Zender Bible, uh, New Living Bible type things I mm. bought. Yeah. It's one of the early ones that came out on CDs that was, um, uh, it was like, it was like uh, listening to a play. Um, dramatize, dramatize, I guess they call it. Um, yeah, yeah, dra dramatize. Actually, the uh, speaking of that, I have, uh, it's not necessarily a book on tape, but uh, the C.S. Lewis um, Chronicles of Narnia uh, done by the, um, 
uh, focus on the family radio theater. They did the whole Chronicles of Narnia series. That is absolutely top notch. Very cool if you like those series. Very well dramatized. Very um, and follows the book, of course, uh, very closely. Uh, I know cool. this is. I know this is a little bit off topic, but does OBS work with Wayland yet? Mm, I don't know. I, I don't, tried. It. Yeah. I last tried I knew, it. it did not. But that yeah, was a while ago. I tried it um, a little bit ago, and it didn't. Like I, it, did, it just wouldn't show. It would show the mouse cursor, but it wouldn't show mm -hmm. anything on the screen. Yeah, and it I, feels I that's what it was. And then I switched back to Xorg, and that's what the problem was. Yep. Yeah, I don't think it does at this point. Yeah, I use um, Wayland because I'm a fedora. Yeah. I just got right. used to it. I'm gonna flip through the comments here a little bit, see if there's any discussion to this here. Uh, some of these I read a little bit. Uh, let's see. Okay. I'm sure we punted the football out there. Oh, probably <laughs> did. So hello to everybody who is on. Uh, we are doing well, Thomas. I think the kitty is back in first mate's bunk. We started calling the kitty first mate's bunk because I have a sleeping bag <laughs> over there he sleeps on because when I leave the office, he snags my chair. And so he takes my captain's chair. So... <laughs> I put up a sleeping bag over there. We call that first mate's bunk. <laughs> oh, um, analog IDC said spam is on, lol. Yep, yep, yep. And that's the thing. I mean, some people like it. I, I like Amazon. I disagree with some of the things they do. But unfortunately, if I didn't buy things on Amazon, I just, I mean, I wouldn't get half the things that I kind of need. I brought, I bought a lot of this stuff for the computer. Like, I bought my speakers. I bought my graphics card. I bought, um... A lot of stuff for my computer off of Amazon. Yeah, I, oh, I, brought, I bought my hard drive, too. Yeah, I usually get my hard drives from Best Buy because we have one of those locally, and they, you know, I actually keep hard drives in stock. My, but my computer is probably about um, seven years old. I bought it off of eBay for $80. It's a great computer. Nice. Um, nice. It's an old Lenovo ThinkStation S20. With it has a Xeon processor. It's the main yeah, I saw it. that processor is a good processor in there. Uh, yeah. Daniel, you'd know better. Uh, with Intel Xenon um, W three five six five. What do you know about that one? Yeah, I believe that's what it is. All right. So here's a question. Well, a comment more from Mark Yates. Uh, the web developer told me his business is hurting because he doesn't have a social media presence. Thoughts, guys. Social media presence. Should we do that? Somebody asked, actually asked me if I should, if I would be getting a, a mastodon. Should I get a mastodon? Like, I thought about doing some easy social media. Just how you know. much free time do you have? Do you really have time to play with that? No, zero. The, the, the thing is, question. is that the, the the reason it would be good is is you know, and due to all these crazy social purges, if YouTube just decides, hey, you're out of here, and I want to throw up all my videos somewhere else instead, where do you go to find that out? I mean, I guess you go to my website, which gets a, a number of hits, and obviously I control that, so. Yeah, if something was uh, up, that's the first place I would look is switch to Linux. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I don't know, and and I mean, it, so a web developer hurting because you don't have a social presence. I don't know. It depends on what you're doing. I think there's ways that you can succeed without the social presence. And the, frankly, I always tell people, if you're not going to update your social media, don't have it. Like, I think I, the last thing went on my my business Twitter account was maybe four years ago. You're maybe. doing social media right now. Uh, correct. Yeah. 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 And I this agree is with, really where things go from. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with that. I mean, I have two businesses besides the job I have at the college. Um, I have my medical practice and my computer consulting, and I don't have any social media. I don't plan on having any social media. I'm not a believer in social media. And I have a lot of people say, oh, you need to get on Facebook. You need to you know, get on this. It'll help your practice grow. Mm -hmm. I'm plenty busy without it. I got plenty of customers, mm -hmm. you know, tech customers without it. I mean, word travels. I mean, I just, I find I don't really yeah. need it and I don't really want it. And I think I'm just overall better off without it. Mm -hmm. my, my observation of social media is, is it's the people that have too much idle time on their hands. And that's where they go for a fix to, to dump it all. Yeah. 
the uh, the elderly, the people, the stay at home uh. moms that got five kids that can't put their kids in daycare because it costs too much. You know, stuff situations like that mm -hmm. where people got idle time to just sit there with their phone and hey, I'm doing this today. Yeah, that, you know well, that's. Like, um, go ahead. A lot of the stuff that um, like a lot of the stuff that I I do, I can just have a website for that. Same for Brian, you can have a website for all of that. Mm -hmm. and, and you control it more. The downside, of course, is it's not as easy to share and spread and things like that. Uh, of course. So my advice to Mark, of course, would, you know, maybe, maybe you do invest in one social account that, that fits the niche of your marketing. But for Mark, since I know what Mark does, Mark, I would be putting up more tech videos. That's what I would do. I wouldn't bother with Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or any of that. Maybe Instagram or something where you're snapping photos of things with silly comments. Whoa, look at this crazy computer water spell, you know? <laughs> I mean, you can I do have, stuff like uh, that. And for business only, I mean, there's a time you want to keep social around for specifically business, you know? Go yeah, ahead. The only, I, the only social media account I have is Instagram, and it's basically full of Linux memes. That's all that's, that's <laughs> on there. Oh, uh, Paul, Paul, Paul says, sounds like sheep all matter. <laughs> all right. Had to get that out. <laughs> oh, my. Hello, Tom Joyner. Greetings. There's hardly any privacy left in the world. And once again, thank you, Analog, for the super chat. Really, the oh, only reason I have Instagram is so I can uh, see what other people at school are doing, because that's what they have. So that's basically the only reason mm. I have it is because that's what they have. Yeah. That's and that's good. I mean, and there's like I said, there's legitimate reasons to keep it around. We just don't want to be sheep all just giving it all in, you know. I don't <laughs> update it very often. There's a whole planet outside the door. Go out and see some of it. Mm hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Live life for real. Mm, correct. Yep. Hello, Frostbite. Greetings. Let's see. Burn all books on November 9th, huh? Hmm. What's the significance of November 9th? I mean, I know November <laughs> 6th, right? November 6th is what the gunpowder, whatever, for all you guys across the pond. Yeah, I got my uh, Switch to Linux cup, too. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's what I got. Yeah. yeah, I haven't bought any Switch to Linux um, apparel yet. I'm waiting for the November sale. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's... Uh, yeah. I put that, yeah, I posted that up. There's like 15%, I think, which ended yesterday, but there's an 18% going on after that. Let me see if I can find that page. Yeah, I'm probably going to buy a, um, switch to Linux, you full mouse pad. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, you're on, you're on the entry for that too, right? So, you yeah, know, wait I, until after the drawing to make sure you don't get it. Um, I may not be able to watch the entry live because we have a Halloween party that night okay. or the um, drawing live. Yeah, and it and it might get pushed out to a couple days. It depends on what's going on here as well. And it is Halloween night, so and you know, it, I may or may not actually live stream that night. Um, you know, if I do, I very well may be disguised as something. I don't know. Um, okay, so Babbler started to buy ebooks for technical topics from Humble Bundles, and then they have something good. Also, I get ebooks on the Kindle app on the phone. Yeah, so and that's the popular one. I just I'm still a little concerned that you just can't necessarily port them over. But I mean, it's uh, it's it's this interesting line to balance because I'm a minimalist and I don't like to have a lot of stuff laying around. So it's good that we have this availability of getting them all, but it's bad the fact that. If I decide Amazon's crazy, I don't want to do business with them anymore. I don't want don't want to lose the entire library I built. It'd be like as devastating as having a fire and losing them all, you know. Right. Is that better? I'm trying to fix my webcam a little bit so you can yeah. see me a bit more. Yeah, that's fine. Sorry, this is a very tall. This is technically an um, art table, like one of those folding art mm, tables. Yeah. When I started, when I wanted to put a computer here, I just folded it up flat, so it's very high. I'm probably going to get a real desk soon. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you can always use one of the standing ones. Okay, so Tom, Tom Joyner sure. does not use ebooks. His wife does. Um, uh, but the, she got a new tablet and couldn't pour anything over. Ugh. That's a bad case scenario, too, you know? It's yeah. like if I got a different device I wanted to listen to my audio books on, 
I would have to port over the Audible app onto that device if it's available for that device. And then I have to painfully download each book to keep mm -hmm. it on hand. And it takes yeah. forever to get them downloaded. Yeah, that's what mine's about 200 megabytes on the quality for distribution. I cut it down to like, I think it's down to like maybe 80 megabytes now for the I one you guys can have. I think they throttle them. They might. They possibly do. So you're not just downloading a whole bunch of them. Um, now, actually, though, speaking of DRM, since we're talking about that, do you remember the original DRM before we had all the streaming stuff where you could you bought the thing, but you could only download it like three times, but it was effectively locked to that device? So if you download it on your Windows computer, it would basically lock it that could only be downloaded or only be viewed on that Windows device. So at least now we have it a little bit better. But still, it's not ours. Right, it and, isn't. Yeah, and, and I think that that's the problem. And that's yes, the thing, because when you pay money for something, you want to feel like you own it. And, and they got us in a position where we're paying good money for things to license them, and we don't yep. really own it. Yeah. And, and they so you don't control it. Mm-hmm. So you always look to, for a DRM free. So if you're on Linux, so let's go ahead and talk about a few of the solutions here. If you are on Linux um, and you download Calibri, uh, which is the ebook manager, and you hit the get new books, you can sort books by what is DRM locked and what is DRM free. Because sometimes if you buy a book that is not DRM locked, you can take that out of your Calibri library, save it to your backups and put that on any device that you want. Now, if you if it is DRM locked, then you are be linked uh, into that account, and so you have to keep that account alive in order to keep using it, and that's really what the problem is. So, some Amazon places, even though my books are on Amazon as eBooks as DRM free, there are some places. I think India requires DRM locked, so you'll see if you search for my books, you'll see the eBooks will come up. A few of them internationally will be DRM locked, but you can always buy the unlocked versions as well. And also uh, for those international, if you are at a place where it is DRM locked, you can always buy them from me from PayHip. Those are all direct downloads that are DRM free. Well, yeah. all this deep, go ahead, Quinn. Go ahead, possible, um, is it possible to basically um, undo DRM, like remove the encryption from the DRM? Like uh, it, remove um, yeah, it is, and for the most part, it's it's fairly straightforward, but it is a violation of United States law. And so you're looking at jail time and hundreds of thousands of dollar fines for doing it. And that's yeah. the problem. So, yeah, it's fairly easy to break, but it's illegal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's there people over in third world countries writing software to do it all the time. You know, it's just mm -hmm. uh, the people legal this factor here is too. really high. Yeah. And of course, in China, everything, you know, it's perfectly legal to, to do all that. You just can't say anything bad about the government. In fact, yep. I think in the new laws, I think the my, this book is actually illegal in China because it's a parody. <laughs> have to look into that i don't know uh, do you use the pop gtk theme i don't i believe most of this dmr history comes directly from the music industry mm -hmm. yeah and when they started having issues with people ripping cds then they had the napster incident where they are actually selling music off a of napster collecting a profit not giving anybody any royalties mm-hmm yeah, and the new law is supposed to fix that, but I'm not sure it's going to. Um, and and that's that's the problem, though. You find that in publishing. You find that everywhere. Like I made the huge mistake by not by not launching my own publishing group when I did my first book because I lost so much money on that. It was to the point where if I wanted to get a copy of my own book, and it cost me over eight dollars to get a single copy, and that was insane. And that's because the publishers take advantage of the people writing books and the music industry takes advantage of the people writing music and things like that. So kind of problematic. Um, yeah, it looks like Mike originally told us that the Ubuntu 1810 was on the, <laughs> on the bottom. Thank you, Mike. Oh, this was about the um, pop theme that you just the comment. Oh, that you, yeah. That, um, 
I tried it. I didn't really like it. I didn't, I, I like Arc better. Yeah, when I use on my computer, I have Arc, Papyrus, and the paper cursor theme. Okay. So yeah, I'm. A, you probably know I'm. A, I'm addicted to material design, like I've said before <laughs> in the past. Do you, do you like that song, Madonna, Material Girl, Material World, whatever it is? I've... <laughs> <laughs> wow, it's old school. Yeah, it is. Uh, Are Sleepy you... Eyes Vance. I have several eBooks on my phone, but I find that I really should be focusing on one book at a time. There's no need to carry more than one book at a time. So hard copy books for the win. <laughs> yeah. Do you like material design all that much, Tom? Um, refresh me on exactly what the definition of material design would be. It's basically, where every where it's basically like everything is all clean and simple, and nothing like if you look at the mm. desktop background, oh, yeah. I have it, nothing overlaps yeah. and nothing's transparent, and it's all sort yeah. of like poppy colors and stuff. Yeah. Uh, no, I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> I I am skeuomorphic. <laughs> <laughs> Give me skeuomorphism. Um, <laughs> but, that, you know, all, it's all personal preferences. There's there's places it could be okay. But, uh, I, I mean, you got to realize that I get up in the morning and I take the first couple days of, off and then I stare at computers, multiple computers, the rest of the day until I go to sleep. Like last night, I, I hit bed at like four in the morning. And yeah. so it was... I want to look at something that looks cool. I don't want to look at something that's just flat and poppy. Yeah. <laughs> but that's, I mean, it's all personal preference stuff, but yeah. Um, what time did you wake up? Um, today it was 11. Usually I don't wake up that late, but what, and I try and get to sleep between two and three. It was, it ended up being four yesterday because I submitted the eBooks to all of the distributors last night. I'm just like, you know what? I'm on a roll. I'm just not going to stop. And it, it took me about two, two, three. I remember it was like 2 a.m. The last when we did the 20,000 subscribers. Yeah, that was, yeah. A, that was and a late I night. I stayed the whole thing, even though um, I said I was going to get off at 1030. Yep. At least I didn't, have, I didn't have school the day after, so that's mainly why I did it. Yeah, that's that's good. Tom, would wanna... you say most of your your energy is spent mentally more than physically? Oh, guaranteed. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, mine's the opposite. Yeah. So you're more physical then? Yeah, I have to get up and go fix a bunch of junk starting at mm. six o'clock in the morning, and then I get mm. home at about four thirty. Yeah, yeah. For me, I know once I get into the office to turn on the computers, I'm not going to get anything else done, but you know, work or things like that. And so, I tr I take that first few hours of my day off and just do the things that you know the other things. Um, I get my reading done. I get walking exercise done. Things like that. So, I actually oh. work on forklifts for a living. Mm. That's people so haven't seen a battery until they've seen a battery that weighs four thousand pounds in an electric <laughs> forklift what's the chemistry That's on cool. those uh, Are they lead acid? uh, uh yes GSM? gsm they're lead acid batteries and they're that way for a reason okay. they um they actually don't want to go to the um the lithium ion batteries quite yet because the lead acid batteries actually acts as part of the counterweight for the forklift. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Cool. You need the ballast. Yes. Yeah. yeah I uh, um, um, pizza likes Gutenberg. The Gutenberg editor. He's, he's yeah. going to get booted off this place. <laughs> now, um, the, the biggest problem with the Gutenberg editor, the, the thing is that pizza is brand new to WordPress and doesn't understand what the, core limitations to it. I'll have to find this comment. Where's this comment at? I've used, um, it just, it says, yeah, it's towards the bottom. It says, I really like Gutenberg. Sue me. Oh, uh, oh, you, you are getting, you are getting sued pizza. You are getting sued. So I have sued. used yeah. um, WordPress in the past and I like the editor. I just didn't really like it all that much because mm -hmm. I just felt like it was, there was too many like menus and all sorts of stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, I mean, on, um, it, yeah, my site is on like GitHub pages, and I just like to write. I just like to have a plain old HTML website that mm -hmm. has a nice theme on it. Yeah, yeah. Now, if if you can if you can use Gutenberg as an editor for WordPress, you're in you're in good place. The problem is is it's extraordinarily limited if you do any development at all, and that's the issue because like I have just on my switch to Linux site. Um, let's see, do I have? Uh, yeah, where's that at? All right. 
just on my switch to Linux site, um, the uh, transition screen there. All right. So on my switch to Linux site, which you guys can see if you're watching the stream, the banners are custom post types. The, um, let's see, uh, all the categories, all of those have custom code. They're not necessarily custom post types, but they have custom code. All the desktop environment stuff, all of the distro stuff, all of the software stuff, all of these, which deeply need updated. I mean, I haven't updated these for a long time. All of these are custom post types um, or have extensive use of custom fields put into them. And Gutenberg just kind of wreaks havoc on all of those. It basically takes from a designer knowing how to build a site and putting the places where they need to be so that a end user, the business owner, the owner of the site, the client can just look at the thing and go, okay, the title goes where it says title. The YouTube video goes where the YouTube video goes. The banner goes where the banner goes. This goes where this goes. That goes where that goes. Push publish. You don't have to worry about it. These people don't have time to work with something like Gutenberg. They're not wanting to build the pages and just even changing one of the tiny little things on a reusable blocks that they talk about. You literally have to change it on nearly every page versus the way it currently is. One theme file pushes it live to everything. That's what Gutenberg breaks. It completely destroys WordPress does, as a developing platform. Does anybody even build anything on Dreamweaver anymore? Um... I, I mean, I use Dreamweaver as the basic editor. Um, I mean, I, I, I think the last copy I had was eight, and that was like 10 years ago, and I could make basic web pages with it, and it was really cool, but they were basic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, if, if you use Dreamweaver as what you see, what you get editor, it, it, it's a very limited, um, but you use Dreamweaver because it gives you code hints, it gives you split views, it gives you, you know, dual views. That's why I use it on a Windows platform. I use Bluefish on, on a Linux platform. So, um, yeah. The, so if you want to see a lot of bad, though, Quint, if you want to see something wicked confusing, try studying Drupal sometime. Okay. Makes me want to go smack myself. Okay, what? Like I like the Joomla CN CMS better than WordPress. I think it's better. Mm -hmm. I think WordPress is good for blogs. I feel like Joomla is better for like websites and stuff. I've used both. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I would disagree um, because there were some limitations to Joomla that made it way more complicated for an end client who's not technologically savvy. Um, yeah. But the one place I always use Joomla for my clients was if they needed multiple different user login types because it managed different user login types way better. I could say this user can access this part of the site, but this user can only access this part of the site. That was what Drew, uh, Joomla was way better for. For some um, reason, my face is like black on the stream. Yeah, I think it's because you're too close to your webcam, I think is what it yeah. is. Yeah. Might be it, yeah. It's bothering but, me. My face um, is black. Uh, your mind is behind ben, you, not in front of you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, ben, I, Brian, I, and yeah, let me Daniel. Turn on this light here. Hold on. Ben, is Brian, and Daniel. Better? Any experience with any of the uh, page builders and things like that? Is that better? Uh, I've stared at dream, like a version of Dreamweaver that was probably from the early 2000s. Every experience I have with HTML makes me makes me regret it. So that's not mm -hmm. my area. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, Dreamweaver was my last experience, and I haven't made any web pages really with it. I did do a really good experiment back in 2004, where I actually made a web server using, uh, I think it was Linux Fedora and uh, Apache, uh, Apache Server Services. They had a really good uh, um, thing where you could make a, a file transfer server. And it worked really good right out of my house. Mm, yeah. But they had a product called No IP. And you subscribe to this um, product. And as long as you had a registered domain name, it would go out, select the IP that your internet service provider gave you, and marry it to the domain name for as long as it was leased to that mm -hmm. IP address. I I think one of those services still exists. I'd like to find out if it does, but I don't know. But, you know, upload speed on DSL ain't the greatest. 
Download speed on DSL Inc. the greatest dealer. <laughs> well, actually, it's not too bad. It's the upload speed. Uh, okay, maybe, maybe in my town. DSL. Last time I tried DSL, I was still getting like one Mbps. You know. I can get. I can Is pull the light better I, now? I'm trying to fix. It. <clears throat> it's You're getting, getting there. Better. Yeah, is that better? I'm turn on the light in front of me. You look great. Yeah. yeah. It just looked weird that I was like completely black. On the, uh, it looks fine on the hangouts, he, but on the stream, see, I look completely black. What you should, which you should have done, is just put on a big hooded suit with an anonymous mask and just talk with one of those processors. That's what you should have done. I mean, come on. Yeah. You could if be I could like find one of those masks. I could do that for Halloween. Right? You could be like pizza and hide behind a pizza. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I have I'm a horse mask somewhere. I'm not as worried about um, my face and everything as pizza is, and my parents don't mind either, mm -hmm. so it doesn't yeah, bother it's, me. It's, I don't think it bothered pizza's face doesn't bother pizza. It's just his parents don't want him to have his face yeah, on there, which is my okay. parents, so, yeah. 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 Okay. People of idle time equal modern journalists. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Anyone who creates books, music, video, or any file that can sell directly from their own website using various file sites and you sell MP4, MP3, etc. files that you want to be willing to buy. Wait. Okay. I'm not... Not understanding the, the whole point, but yeah, okay. Okay, uh, relatives are on Facebook, but all they do is argue and fight with each other. <laughs> yeah. Hello, Anna Rita. Greetings. I use G plus to post some poetry. Not anymore. <laughs> 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 um, the social media friends uh, you know from real life feel weird to you. I mean, the friends in my life are pretty good on social media because no one's posting lame pretzel memes. Go out and kick a ball. A thing young people would never uh, would prefer to do is digital from their phone. What gets me is the amount of people that have free time to make all that artwork they put up on Facebook. Okay, when I go on to go to a file, if it links to Amazon and not to the creator's site, I seek the file other ways. Maybe it's no longer to support Amazon. And that exactly, ByteTube, is why I have chosen to not accept as much money from Amazon and keep my stuff from being exclusively there because everything is available directly on my website. Um, and that's usually the best way to pick it up. Um, of course, international, I have the uh, pay hip, which is still good. Pay hip actually gives me the best return for anything. I think they only take 5%. Well, you, uh, you being a self businessman, you got to be conscientious about all those little money decisions. Mm hmm. Yeah. Where I get up in the morning, I do what they tell me to do, and I get a big, I get a check at the end of the week. You know. Yeah. yeah. It ain't even that anymore. It's a direct deposit mm -hmm. of phony money. Yep. <laughs> Use Kobo, but I use my library's online services, audiobooks. Yeah, Kobo is good because there's a lot of free options with Kobo. And with Kobo, you can actually, you guys know you can rent um, ebooks from libraries too through Kobo. Okay, I'm ready to burn an audio CD, then rip it to get around the DRM. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Remember when you had to burn an audio CD, then rip it back to get around DRM on Windows? Lost a bunch of music that I paid for through the legal Napster doing WMA files. Yeah. Oh, I remember so, something remember like that. Yeah, because Napster, this is funny. Napster went to the WMA file format, right? Because they were quite a bit smaller. I have a few things still in WMA that I haven't paired it out yet and put back to MP3. Uh, and so... It was like two years ago. They're like, Windows 10 pulled the DRM off of their machine. So literally your computer had to be connected to the internet to play your music file that you have purchased and legally downloaded. So there, the solution, don't update your Windows. <laughs> yeah. This seems to be the solution today also. <laughs> yeah, which there was yet another bug reported to um, be deleting files again. Just yesterday I saw it. Did if somebody was sent, 
Go ahead. Uh, did you know that um, Windows 10, that the bug was reported through the Windows Insider program three months before Windows 10, uh, the latest update was released? Yep. And they never yep. fixed it? Yep. Yep. They, they had reported, like thousands of people reported it as an error. Uh, pizza stayed up until 11.30 last night fixing the server, setting up WordPress. Very good. Um, Is it... Did you guys uh, get pizzalovingnerd.com on his new site now? Yes, it's over on his new site. Yep. You own his domain, right? Yes. Well, I mean, I, I bought it for him. Yeah. And I host all the DNS for him because he doesn't have a way to host the DNS. So when he needs something changed, I have to do it. I was able to buy my domain through Hostinger for 99 cents a year. It was very cheap. Through which one? Hostinger. Mm, yeah, yeah. There's there's some there's some good ones out there. It's pretty. I like their um, dashboard is pretty good too. I just had all I had mm -hmm. to do was just to point the domain to the GitHub pages name servers. Yep. It was pretty yeah. easy. Yeah, Caillou Barton says setting up WordPress server doesn't take longer than ten minutes for me. Well, I mean it depends. On, yeah, I mean yeah. A, it was his first server, but B, it depends on how you're setting it up. He was setting his up fully from scratch on DigitalOcean, but yeah. Would you okay. DigitalOcean as a um as to host websites? I've been thinking about getting DigitalOcean. Um, if you're hosting just hosting a website, I would probably not do DigitalOcean. You'd want to use that for web applications. So, oh, yeah. um, I would use DigitalOcean for if you're setting up a Calibora server, if you're setting up a Stun yeah. server, uh, any of those types of web applications. That's what you want DigitalOcean yeah. for because you have to configure everything manually and you have to be very careful of security uh, okay. and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I would do just for hosting a basic web um, website, just do something with cPanel. Um, I'm, in which... gonna, I'm just going to keep my site on GitHub pages for right now, mm -hmm. and then I'll eventually just see where it goes. I don't think it's going to go anywhere. Yep. You make it sound like a web page these days is actually an app. <laughs> well, there's different interfaces. So, like, on my on my personal cloud server, right, um, I can do I can do a chat. In fact, we could probably be doing this on my system. I simply haven't tested it as thoroughly as I need to. I know Google Hangouts works. I haven't tested my other platform um, fully extensively yet. But I have a platform that should be able to do all this that we're doing with this interaction on my platform. It has to go through a stun server. You can't set that up on a basic cPanel. Um, you have to you have to install the applications and and configure the files and things things that you can't do on a cPanel. The other thing is I run a my system also has a Google Docs replacement, which is actually LibreOffice running online connected via web app to the platform. You also can't do that on a uh, on a cPanel. Um, a it takes too much memory, and B you just can't do it. You need to install a Docker container and then stuff like that. So. Uh, all those are the things that you use DigitalOcean. Uh, of course, the other company that just came out is SkySilk. Um, they just launched uh, off of their new betas. And then, um, uh, of course, AWS. And I'm using AWS is what I use mostly for those, which is a little bit more complicated, but yeah, I think they have a little bit better I think security. I'll just stick to my microcontroller uh, stuff that I have <laughs> to do, and that's it. Yeah. Have you um, heard of Glitch before? It's this um, it's this website called Glitch that lets you basically create um, like Node.js web apps and websites under their domain, like .glitch.com. No, I haven't. I've used, it, I've used it for a lot of school projects and stuff. It's pretty nice. It just lets you create like a simple web app or something with um, HTML or JS or whatever. I remember when Sony DRM locked CDs with a Windows CPU, it made you accept the terms or it ejected it so you couldn't rip it. Wow. Well, and the root Let's... kit they put in. Oh, yeah. I remember that. You know, and, and the thing is with those, that's easy. You just put the thing into a separate CD player, connect it into the back of your computer on the input line, and push record through Audacity. Yeah, we can get around this. Or use... <sighs> a linux distro from back then and yeah the, the root kit won't won't run i don't know what are you trying to do 
<laughs> what is all this stuff? This got the annual TLM membership discount. Woohoo. All right. Hey, Sleepy Eyes, uh, the uh, link is over there if you want to jump on. All right. Okay. Oh. I, uh... Do you think you'll ever switch your Patreon to TLM completely? Like, get rid of Patreon altogether? Huh. Um, I don't know. If they go totally crazy, um, uh, probably. I'm sure the rest of you guys are Patreon, right? Um, I don't know. I am. Uh, yeah, I Mike am. Brian is... I am. Yeah, so they're all Patreon, yeah. Which, by the way, you guys, I, I did set up, uh, Brian, I did send, set up your TLM account, too, if you did Right, see right, that. that's where I got the Art of Shallow Neighboring from. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, I thought that was on Patreon, too. I thought it I was. I only got Maybe a couple of you guys I support through Patreon. Um, the rest of the guys I support, I send them money via PayPal. Mm, yeah, yeah, and that's, that's the way to go. Are you yeah, either way. Yeah, are you planning to add other? You're planning to add um, other payments to Think Life Media, right? Like um, Libre Pay, right? You just haven't um, done that. I would like to. Like, I have a Libre Pay account. Um, I don't advertise at this point in time because I'm not sure how I feel about that yet. Um, they and... had some issues. Mm hmm. Like what? I don't know. There was something that went down with them a couple months ago. Yeah, I think it was like Mastercard or something stopped accepting transitions to them or something because you know they were supporting terrorist groups or whatever i don't know <laughs> yeah why else i mean alex I, jones I, was over there they shut the whole thing down <laughs> i know there was an issue with them that made the news a couple months ago and i can't remember what it is but it was enough to shock everybody yeah so yeah i don't know and i don't know if anybody's supported anything over there yep uh, pizza asks, can we settle out of court? Yeah, we can settle out of court. I guess so. I'll drop the lawsuit. I'll drop the lawsuit. All right. Uh, Mom does not appreciate your custom host file because it says unable to connect for her websites is going to. Uh, that might mean it's a not a good website. <laughs> um, yeah, that thing does block bad nasty websites <laughs> uh but yeah so i mean like if it's a legitimate website i mean i can take it out but eh, i don't know um of course if you send it to me i won't be able to look at it <laughs> uh if you need a website just uh would hire tom very simple yep there you go like review of gnome 33 it's gotten a lot better all right. Thank you, man. Yeah, I'm waiting for Fedora 29 so I can get GNOME 330. Yeah, it looks pretty... Uh, the performance is going to be the best thing about it. Mm. Yeah, it does. I, I really like the Ubuntu. Of You're course, the GNOME the guru. Yes. Yeah. I like I GNOME. I think you made a comment about me when I said something bad about GNOME in the chat one day. I've You're probably, the guy that, that you challenged like, me. Yeah. <laughs> I have um, it doesn't bother me because my system has 20 gigs of RAM in it, so it doesn't matter if it uses a lot of resources. Yeah. And that some, some people can't run it. Like, that's fine. I just don't like KDE or any um, or any of the other budgie, I guess. But I don't really like any of the Qt or the Qt based desktops. Mm. There's not. Um, I just don't really like the, um, I feel like they're very, like, conflict, like, there's, like, so many, like, settings and stuff with them, mm -hmm. and, um, I just feel like sometimes they're just a little bit quirky, where I feel like GNOME is pretty stable and everything. See, it feels the opposite from people that have used Windows for 20 years and just yeah. switched over to Linux recently, and... Yeah. They get this, they push this thing, and all these icons go poof in the middle of the screen. Like, oh, it's a Mac. <laughs> yeah. That's for, uh, that's why I like it, is because I'm a Mac user. So Okay. That you spilled the beans on that one. Yeah. 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 So I, Anna, Anna Rita says it, it, it okay, you looked mysterious in the dark. <laughs> uh Mark Yates, I made you a mod so you can post the link. There's a link for you that Mark wants to put in there, Quint. So Okay, yeah. Yeah, I know. Um, you know I have a Mac because I've talked about it. The Smash and Tosh right here. Yeah, yep. 
Hey, I got a I got a Mac Mini down here. It hasn't been on all week, but I do have yeah. a Mac Mini down here. I have never used a Mac. I think not it even the old uh, CRT ones. Nope. Um, I know you. you guys if you're like still it. on, what's the paywall question? All right, go ahead. Yeah, I know you guys don't like it, but I like the Mac UI better than the Windows UI. We just don't like the Windows at all. <laughs> yeah, I just yeah, I don't want I don't the Windows UI just isn't like I know you say that the Windows UI is the most productive for you. I think the opposite. Mm -hmm. I think the Mac UI is the mm -hmm. most productive for me. Yeah. That's why I like GNOME and all that. And that's the cool thing about Linux is you can just set it up any way you want. You know, yeah. if 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 I really like the way Windows worked and I really like the Mac UI, I don't have a choice. But to set it up, you know. It, Linux does one thing that Windows can't. You can install three or four different desktops, and then mm -hmm. depending on your mood in the morning, you can switch yeah. to which one you want to use. Or or your there family are members. You can put can on choose. top of Windows. Mm -hmm. Oh, there you are. You can make Windows 10 look a little like uh, 7 with uh, uh, Classic Shell. Is that the name of it? I think so. Yeah, but can you make it look like a Mac? Never tried. I wouldn't. I know you can make Windows XP look like a Mac. Yeah, There's but that's. I mean, that's called. older than you are, man. <laughs> that's all I know. I know there's an app in that runs on Windows XP, and it makes it look like the old OS 10. Well, I, I know when I've got. I bought a laptop from Best Buy. Uh, I think back in 2012, and it had Windows 8 on it. I got a home, turn it on, ask all these questions, then poof, there's all these tiles and stuff on the screen. I'm like, man, I hate this. <laughs> then I found yeah, I something. they had a, a third party option you could install called Start is Back. Yeah. <laughs> you, put, you put that program in and you got a start button and the, the tiles all went away and you could have like an old desktop. Yeah. I had to live with a Surface RT for probably from about um it was probably about 2012 to 2014 that was like one of my first computers and yeah i couldn't even install apps on it that weren't from the windows store because you know it's arm mm -hmm. processor yeah that, that was probably the worst computer i've ever owned well microsoft microsoft just shot themselves in the foot with the poor marketing of that because they had the surface and the surface rt at the same time yeah and people didn't you know, consumers just don't know what the difference is. Yeah, except yeah. RT is cheaper than the Pro. Now, I have a Surface Pro 1, the first generation of, of Surface. And it is, like, the 8 UI is very good on a touch device like a Surface. Yeah. It I wouldn't want it anywhere else. From what I remember. Yeah. Um, all right, here's, here's the comment. Uh, is paywall is another form of DRM. So let's talk about paywall. What do your guys think? So the whole comment says... Just wanted to read a good article for research purposes. Boom. Payroll. Sub subscribe to get just one article. What do you th guys think about this? Uh, ben, what do you think? I, So long as there's a portion of the content that's free so that you know what you're actually buying before you've put your money down, I don't have a problem with paywalls. Okay. What uh, is Brian? paywalls exactly anyways? Um, so you go to a link, you want to read the article, you have to either pay or you have to create an account. You have to do something oh, yeah. to view it. I know what you're talking about now. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Uh, Brian, what's your thoughts on paywalls? Yeah. Uh, again, it could be insane because I know I do a lot of research <clears throat> on things, a lot of internet browsing because I have my fingers in quite a few different pies and it really ticks me off sometimes when I go to a site and I want to read an article they want me to create an account and I could be looking up something where I might never look into that particular thing again so I'm there strictly as a one-time you know looker and I know once I create an account, I'm going to get emails, I'm going to get targeted ads, I'm going to get, I mean, I'm never going to hear the end of it from them. Once they got my information, I'm on the hook with them forever. And I don't need that because I only want to read one article once. And I see that, I immediately click away and I'm like, you know, I'll find the information elsewhere. I just don't want to be bothered with that. Yeah. I agree with you. You can use one of those um, disposable email addresses or whatever. 
Yeah. Yeah. I, and if I had to, that's what I would do. Yeah. But it's just it's a hassle. Yeah, I just had to do that today because I had a client. We we had we have a store finder on a client, and uh, they sell. Actually, you might like this, Brian. It's uh, uh this is a doctor I work with in um in Los Angeles, and they sell. Uh, it's the guy that runs the Preggy Pop and Queasy Pop lines. So it's for morning sickness or other nausea things. So you take them. It's it helps with nausea and things. Well, we have a database of seven thousand retail stores you can buy these in, and the plugin that we had for the store mapping just doesn't work anymore. More. So it's like, hmm. So we need to switch our plugins, and we're like, yeah, I'll pay the the forty bucks for the plugin. But this guy just wants all this data. I'm like, dude, I'm using PayPal because I have a PayPal account set up for anonymous purchasing, and you want all this information. I'm like, he's like, well, you know, I got to have it for you, whatever else. I'm like, all right, fine. <laughs> Random keyboard spam. <laughs> Here's your money. Give me my plug-in. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's ridiculous. You know, even even in the medical field, you were mentioning in the medical field. I was doing a house call one time on a patient that lives in Ormond Beach. It's a town near where I live. And they lived in this apartment complex. So I'm walking out the door. This guy walks up to me and he says, hey, I noticed you're in the area. Can Can you take a look at me? I'm like, yeah, I just need some information for billing purposes. So the gentleman says to me, wait, I don't think you understand. You look at me. I pay you cash. You don't know me. I don't know you. It's strictly between us. So I thought about it and I'm like, okay, fine. You know, give me the money. So we went in his go. apartment. He gave me my money. I gave him his medical exam and we were both happy. <laughs> There as you long go. as I got paid, I didn't care. There you go. Yeah, I and that's exactly the case was. I had. Yeah. Uh, Daniel, what's your thoughts on paywalls? Well, first of all, um, to do a paywall, that means you have to go to another area of the Internet and log in to get to see the content. That's kind of a hassle. Um, paywalls, first of all, you got to really like the guy. And second of all, you really got to like at least 70% 70 70 of the content that he's doing, okay? Mm -hmm. So for you, yes, I would probably go visit a paywall situation because your content's really good and you have a really huge online presence. Mm -hmm. um, for somebody that makes like two YouTube uh, videos a week, I probably would eventually drift away from it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that would be my feelings on on paywalls, because YouTube's pretty universal. You can click around real simple and watch anything or anybody. Yeah. You know, but when you got to log into like Patreon and then go to that person's list of videos and watch it and mm -hmm. then log out, because then you're entering another area of the internet where you got to get in more right, login information yeah a little bit more thing uh ben any any rebuttals to any of that because you kind of disagreed with a, a lot of the folks i mean i think it depends a lot on what what kind of content we're talking about if if we're talking about you know hopping hopping onto a news network what, 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 and what we rephrase it article. this way a, a single news article because it's like the headline looks looks interesting or i need to research something versus hey i'm going to consume this guy's content on a regular basis uh, if, if it's the single news article, that is an immediate turnoff. I'll close that browser tab real mm. quick. Uh, yeah, if it's, you know, content that I want to see and I want to mm. support, then I have absolutely no trouble with a paywall. Okay. So I think, a, I think that's the same then everybody's... as a subscription. <clears throat> mm -hmm. When you're, when yeah. you're doing a paywall, you might as well be subscribing to see that person's content. That's mm -hmm. the bottom line. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So there's that. So yeah, it is sort of like a DRM type thing. Okay. Uh, okay. So if there's anything else in here, premium dynamic DNS also. So yeah, I guess premium dynamic DNS. I think that that is the one Mark Yates was talking about that actually has the ability to um, follow your uh, IP address as your ISP changes it. I understand elementary is made to look like Max, and if you're using Ubuntu, there is Mac Ubuntu DE. Okay. Yeah, I don't like the Mac Mac UI. Like, I don't like I don't like the way the buttons and stuff look and like the colors and stuff. But I like the workflow of it. 
Like, mm-hmm. I like the, sort of the workflow, but I don't like the way it looks, if you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. But basically, that's what I do is I take that same workflow and then I replace it with more material design style elements. And that's like perfect for me. That's exactly what I want. You probably take it apart and put it back together the way you want it. Yeah. Yep. Okay, I've hit the bottom of the comments. Let's see, rich never steal even in a supermarket. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Yeah, I guess uh, I think the Wimmel's comment there is back on DRM. See, I just make the, dis- the intentional choice not to buy DRM where absolutely possible. Uh, there's times, of course, they will. Like um, one of the books I'm, I'm just finishing the research of, and um, there was like one of the comments I had in the book that was in there for like a year is, I need to go watch this movie so I understand it again before I talked about it. Well, I didn't really want to own a copy of the movie, but then this is a cool thing about why I use Amazon. You can actually rent a movie on Amazon with cash on your gift card, right? So I go down to the local local grocery store when I was out or whatever it was, I think Sheets gas station where I'm at, down where I'm at, and I just scan my card. I hand them, you know, $5 is the minimum you can put on a card. Hand them $5, I go home, and I rent the movie on Amazon, which is a DRM locked thing. Rent the movie on Amazon for, uh, I think I paid down at 2 or $3 for it. Pulls right out of my gift card balance that I just paid cash for. And now I can watch it, you know, as many times as I can watch it in a 24-hour period of time. I like that. That's good. Yeah. I don't mind something like that DRM locked. But if I'm like, um, you know, I just went down and, and bought some movies. I just found Scream 3 for my Scream collection. Um paid three dollars for that that's a physical dvd now i own that for a long time Difference, keep in you know? mind that dvd only works as long as they keep making dvd players mm-hmm. yeah yeah and they're or, making you know, cheaper and cheaper cheaper other ways to get media off of them you know um just <laughs> i remember yeah. probably about six months ago i was in walmart and finally for the first time i was just so shocked in years that I saw just a DVD player, no smart, no Blu-ray. It was just the DVD. Yeah, that's <laughs> hard to find. Very hard to find. Um, and it's like TVs, it's everything. It's like I want to buy a dumb TV. Where's the TV without the stuff in it? <laughs> yeah, it's a you buy a smart TV, and within three years, it becomes a dumb TV because they don't update the apps inside the TV. Yep. The apps Absolutely. quit working. Absolutely. Not to mention they track you, track you and spy on you. All right, we're going to wrap this up in about 10 minutes or less. Um, I am doing a Christian stream tonight, 9 o'clock Eastern time on my other channel. Uh, so we're going to wrap up so I can go throw some chicken in the oven and uh, prior to that and get it all set up. So Yeah. Okay. I, uh, it's so many appetizers like when we have a party i'm the guy who always makes the cheese board and stuff because i love that and i can't cook so that's like <laughs> what i like to do to help and i just eat so much of that that for mm. dinner all i had was just a salad because i nice. ate so much prosciutto so, and so wh- why can't you cook i just don't i've never i'm not good at it i don't really like it mm-hmm yeah, learn to yeah, do a few things. Likes to cook. I don't like to yeah. cook, though. I don't cook either, so don't feel bad. Yeah. I do the very <laughs> basics, and that's it. I like to yeah. cook. I have my next cooking recipe is going to be the, the caramel sauce. I was going to put it up uh, earlier this week, but I looked at some of my footage. I wasn't happy with some of my footage, so I had to redo it, and that means I have another jar of caramel syrup in my refrigerator now. Mm. <laughs> the cleanup shame. is another thing that I just can't get past is when you're done making this nice delicious meal and you're nice and good and stuffed, you have all these dirty pots and pans mm-hmm. to look at. Yeah, for me if you I do don't it as you go, don't mind it's less it. bad. Hey, correct. Yeah. Yeah. And that's usually what I do is I wash stuff as I'm going back and forth, but for me I don't mind it at all because it's it's really it's my break away from the computers, away from everything. I throw on something to listen to with my dumb MP3 player and I just play that and uh, I intentionally spend about an hour or so in the kitchen without looking at screens and stuff. Um, but that's a special case, of course. So. Yeah, but you're still feeling really good and energized, and you're not all physically wore out. Where yeah. I get home from work, I don't want to look at any pots, pans, or anything. 
I Not pay a kid to mow the grass, shovel the snow. <laughs> I have a house cleaner that comes over. There you go. That's the way to do it. It's yeah, the only that's way very, I can do it. Mm, so yeah, and that's somebody... very true, too. Because I notice when I'm out seeing patients and it's very physical work, I come home, I'm exhausted. I just want to come home and crash. But when I go to the college to teach, I come back, I'm full of energy. I'll I'll cook a big lasagna mm -hmm. or a big pot of ziti or something yeah. like that. Yeah. I enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Like you said, I put some music on, on from my dumb MP3 player. Oh, I throw a nice album on the turntable and just crank up my 1978 Pioneer and make the neighbors scream. Mm, now you're mm -hmm. talking. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, wife the other day, Anna Rita's wife made the homemade chocolate pudding the other day. Yeah. Oh, yum. That's good stuff uh, if you do the homemade chocolate pudding. Actually, the homemade vanilla. I don't, I don't think I have the recipe for the vanilla up there, but that is just really good vanilla pudding. Cooking has steps once you... They need, they need to make little tiny, like, uh, transporters for these Linux computers so you can, like, beam stuff back and forth while you're <laughs> live chatting. Mm, yeah. yeah, that's one of the I like the pudding. That's one of the things that I like about Apple products is the airdrop functionality. It's just so nice to mm. have that. I guess there is Bluetooth file transfer, but then you have to like pair everything, and it takes a minute. Mm -hmm. so well, airdrop I'm... fast and easy. Mm -hmm. So, Daniel, you're talking more about like doing things live or what? What do you mean with the transporter? Yeah. Oh, but it's kind of like. You like had a, a a box thing, you know. Let's say he wanted to send some pudding over to try out. Just beam it oh, over. Oh, oh okay, kind of oh, like the Willy uh, Wonka approach. The Willy yeah. Wonka thing. Gotcha. That would be cool. I, I that thought would you were be talking awesome. about like files or something. Yeah, yeah. We're well, you're, you're almost there with three D printing because someone halfway around the world could send send you something that he's imagined so, or created, and it's. Send it to your computer, and your 3D printer can duplicate it on this side. Of well, the world. all we need to do is just have just have three like food the food uh, uh, mm. food cartridges, so it 3D prints food. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we just get down to the molecular structure, do it. It just prints out the food, and then literally, and then we're gonna get hack box or something that's gonna give us nasty things. I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to know what kind of malware would come out of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, botulism. <laughs> Yeah, someone's gonna engineer anthrax. <laughs> Digital anthrax. Oh, mm. That'd be that'd be exciting. That'd be horrible. Then computer medicine would join real medicine, and I'd have more work to do on both my jobs. There you go. Let's go ahead and feed the kitty. <laughs> feed the kitty. Feed the kitty before we forget. Come on, kitty. Ah, uh, back to temptations. Yeah. Does he actually eat cat food, or is that all he eats is treats? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. He eats he eats cat food too. He does eat cat food. All right, buddy, Are you ready? He's uh, a really cute animal. He... Yeah, he is. He is. Yeah. Come on, come on, buddy. Isn't oh, your third no. cat really shy? Yeah, I have two of them. The other ones. Yeah, yeah, this is the the one that's not shy. Yeah. One more, buddy. One more. One more for you. Right, 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 right here. Right here. Right here. There you go. My cousin's got like three cats, but when you go over to his house, you only you'd swear there's only two cats that live in the house because one of them's really shy, and it's always hiding. Yeah. yeah. I don't have any pets. I wish I did. We just don't have. My dad just doesn't really like pets inside the house, so we don't have any. It, it's the hair that I have an issue with. Mm. Mm. That's the problem because they're they like this one particularly. It sheds all over the place, right? You're just like constantly shedding. We have no idea why he still has hair at all, but yeah, he does. Yeah, we our kitty. She's okay when it's just us in the house, but anybody else comes here, she's like under the couch. <laughs> the same way. Yeah, you look up the debt the. Dictionary definition of scaredy cat and her pictures there. <laughs> yeah. Now I had a cat named Stanley, and you'd think that cat was a dog. It'd run to the door when somebody came over. <laughs> mm. Yeah. 
Okay. At night, he would sleep on your head, and you just grab his legs and wrap them around your head like earmuffs. Mm. <laughs> now, uh, sleepy guys, Vance. Now, imagine CJ in a chef's hat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you want to be in a chef's hat? Um, do any of your cats participate in any of your other channels? Um, yeah, um, I'll have the kitties. Uh, not the cooking channel. I think that, you know, cats on a cooking channel would probably be a bad deal. But, um, yeah, I do put the I do put the cats on the um, the Christian channel as well when I live stream. Yeah, um, CJ yeah. loves to sit on the Bible. Yeah, he's uh, he's a Bible cat. I don't know if he's <laughs> if he's really the devil distracting me from it or if he's just trying to absorb the word. I'm just not sure. Hmm. Yeah, the cooking channel's more or less a dog thing, you know? See, so you, you toss the dog a soup bone when you're done with it. <laughs> there you go. Or steak bone, or... Yeah, except I save my bones so I can make, make uh, pudding out of them. Or not pudding, us, uh, broth out of them. Mm. Yeah. yeah, you save your bones. I've done that a few times. Yeah, it's because you can do, of course, broth is also the base of making gravies, too. So you don't use it just to make soups. You use it also to make gravies and things. So, you know, I'll do I'll do a bunch of soup like I'll do um, um, do a, a thing of broth. And then you can get one full like 10 bowls of soup in a crock pot. And then you have I, I think it makes like an additional four cups. So that's like four different servings of gravy as well. So you can do a lot of cool stuff with it. Did you make that bean soup yet? Uh, the ham and bean soup. I, I, I made that and I have all footage of it. Um, I wanted to do, since I did the broth last, I wanted to put something else in between that and uh, and a soup. So I have the footage recorded, um, but I wanted to do the caramel syrup next and then I'll do the bean soup after that. Yeah. It is. It is good. All right. Well, I think we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. Uh, final words, everybody. Whoever wants to go first. DMR, it's not what you want to get. Um, it locks down everything that you purchase, and sooner or later, the thing that unlocks it so you can use it becomes obsolete. So I, I myself, am not a big fan of it. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree. To buy? Oh. Go ahead. When you get the option to buy something without DRM, you should probably buy it that way, but sometimes you're sort of forced. Sometimes you're locked. Yeah. You're locked. Yeah, that's how I feel about it. If I have to deal with it, I have to deal with it, but I would really prefer to not have to deal with DRM. I mean, my feeling is if you pay for something, you should own it and you ought to be able to mm -hmm. do with it what you want yep. as long as you don't step on anyone else's rights. And if I buy content, I ought to be able to play it on any device as long as it's my device and I'm the one using it. Yep. And Absolutely. I just find it annoying and a hassle. Well, Brian, I like got over two hundred dollars of audiobooks in this phone, and I'm I'm kicking myself today. I'm like, why did I do that? Mm -hmm. Because there's only <laughs> one player; they'll play them. Yeah. Well, yeah. here. Uh, Oh, so you're talking about the you're talking about the uh, the audio, audio, audio ones. ones. Okay, yeah. I thought it, it. I thought that there is check their website because I thought that there is a a legal way to get them as MP3 as well. I'm pretty sure there is. They're from Audible, so I don't know what their policy. They're a yeah. leg of Amazon. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I, I was rec I was trying to read into that, and I, I thought there was, but. Like it requires, it requires having the app and then you log into your account and then you should, there is a third party you can get what is perfectly legal to the best of my knowledge that will allow you to convert your Audible library to MP3. I'm pretty sure there is. If I, I encounter it, I'll, I'll send it over to you. I, I, I encountered that with Windows, but I cannot find a Linux, you know, <clears throat> thing well, that'll do it it's spin uh, yourself Windows up only. a virtual machine because <laughs> mm. i do have most of the books in the windows computer and there are mm -hmm. some tools that allow you to convert them but you got to have the app for the computer mm -hmm. and some books turn out and others do not turn out well it's the chapter thing that skips them up and makes them act goofy 
the way they put the chapters and the audio books that are part of the DRM and all that. Mm-hmm. When you go to MP3, it doesn't pick up the chapters. It adds a skip or a stop or, uh, mm-hmm. you know, some kind of bug in some of them. Mm-hmm. Well, you can you can get my audiobook without any of that. I have it well tagged for uh, uh, IDT tags one and two versions. I have all the audio stuff in there, so I'll send you I'll send you a link to that uh, since you do the audiobook thing, and it's all MP3s. So you can put it on anything. Just don't redistribute yeah. it, of course. Um, Quint, final words on DRM. DRM makes me shiver. I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine if your house had DRM protection on it. What would that be like? Mm. No, you wouldn't be able to have visitors over. That's for sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> be like present. Yeah. DRM in music production is for performers. You better do not hear live. Um. Oh, Paul's restored a whole lot of 70s Pioneer gear. Oh, that old 70s Pioneer stuff was awesome. All right. I think we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. So uh, thanks for coming along, guys. And uh, don't forget to take a look at the links in the description down below, everybody. And we will uh, talk to you next time. I'm going to stick on after I'll show the video. Yep. Oh, yeah. Like the video, comment, subscribe, and things like that. Yeah, help support the channel.